my experience at Skookum Check. <laughs> uh, well, Skookum Check has, certainly has a reputation, and that reputation is that it's a pretty serious place. Um, the wave itself is uh, amazing, but definitely there's uh, some significant consequences downstream. Skookum Check's like another level. It's big and it's gnarly. Uh, yeah, basically between the death line and the whirlpools and the, on the left and the boil on the right, there is one small window. Yeah, depending on the knots, but normally it's between 10 and 20 meters, yeah, which you gotta hit. If you hit this window, you're fine. If you do not hit this window, you're not fine. I should have trained a lot and paddled a lot and be prepared for skook. And if you are not prepared for skook, it shows you your limits. It pushes you to see, you know, if you're going to get back in and take another surf, take another tour, or if if you're going to succumb to the fear and sit on the sidelines and watch the others. You just have to have a different, a little bit different approach. You know, you may not be trying to progress and try new tricks and stuff. Like you're guaranteed to swim through some pretty nasty stuff. <laughs> so I got sucked down two whirlpools. First one was a bit scary because I didn't know if I was going to be going underwater for a while or what. My heart was pounding and the adrenaline was going and I was crapping my pants basically. <laughs> the eye of the whirlpool was about two meters beneath the water surface and it was right behind me and it was pretty, pretty scared about that. It's fucking big out there and if you are not prepared and if you are not in shape and if you are not feeling comfortable, it shows you your lines. It shows you there's your limit. The whole time you're surfing in the back of your mind, there's, you're thinking about that tour and, and how to exit off the wave without missing the eddy. And you're definitely thinking about the consequences. There's so much water moving, there's so much things going out there. You can't compare with any river in the world because in no river on this planet would be that much water moving at the same time. It's, Incredible, it's a breathtaking experience. Mr. Gaspian's killer told me so. La 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 la. Turn it down on the radio. La 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 la. My poor summer, summer, poor summer vibes get. massive out there and there's whirlpools and there's big waves crashing around and I don't know if I'm gonna flip over and not get you my only goal is to get that person out of the water and get you guys safe and so I just having to learn how to say you no know, put your fears aside and get that person because that's my job I'd say for me, just the, the first day going and we arrived a little bit late to the wave and it was already kind of in effect. 
and as it peaked everybody's thinking they're hot shit and then it peaked and four people were on tour at the same time <laughs> and so I, I mean to me that was very uh it was very eye-opening where it was like this place needs to be respected i mean it will beat you down if you don't and um so that was i mean one story but i thought it was pretty memorable and over the years my confidence has grown and I'm pretty comfortable in just about any river now, except for Scoot. <laughs> That's the one that still terrifies me a little bit, so. But, I don't know, that's what it's, partly what the sport is about too, pushing yourself a bit and overcoming these obstacles. So, I still have a lot of respect for Scoot and Trek and I don't always surf it at peak, but I'll get in there when it's a little smaller and and I'll jump on the jet ski when it's big and tow in the boys and pull them out of the whirlpools. <laughs> yeah, driving the jet ski at Skookum Trek is, a, is an experience in itself because it's, you're dealing with some pretty crazy water and it's, it's changing constantly. So you really gotta be on your toes. Like we would, we'll cut across right through the main current in, in a certain spot and it's usually fairly easy. And I was doing that, I think on the third day of this trip or something, I was cutting across to the other side and this wave just rose up underneath me out of nowhere. <laughs> and all of a sudden I'm on top of this probably three meter wave or something. When I came down the face of it and hit the transition at the bottom, the jet ski just nosed in and I was completely submerged. The current like flipped me around, pulled me off the jet ski. I was still hanging onto the bars, but I was completely off, dragging in the water, just hanging on for dear life. Almost recovered and had myself back on the ski and I look up and I'm right at the death line. So I went through that, got knocked off the ski again. <laughs> Managed to keep the jet ski upright the whole time though and pulled myself back on there and got out of there relatively unscathed but definitely uh, reminds you that you gotta be on your toes out here. It's very challenging but it's very rewarding at the same time. It's a, it's a very special place, a very intense place, but there's nothing like it. Like when you get, when you hear all the whitewash and it's like churning and it's just loud and it's just almost deafening and then you're on the wave and it greens up, and it's just quiet and glassy and you can just hear your rail cutting through the water. That's Nirvana. It is. to this whole river thing, but this kind of steps it up a notch or two. <laughs> Thank you. Oh.